Hey everyone, it's Apiana here, and today I wanted to share with you guys my Sims 3 must-have mods and a small list of favorites I really cannot live without. So in case you're thinking you're so outdated with this video, well, some of you have asked, how do I get such a smooth gameplay in The Sims 3? This will generally answer that question, and just, you know, for those who are still into The Sims 3 gameplay or you're recently getting into the mods, this may be helpful because it definitely is something that I cannot live without before starting up my game. Alright, so first off, we're gonna go over all the tabs I have open here on my windows. Don't get overwhelmed, it's really not that much. And then in case you guys are interested to know what settings I use for, you know, a smoother gameplay, I will be jumping over to The Sims 3 afterwards. So anything that I do mention right now will be available down in the description box in case you guys want to download this into your own game. So to no surprise, the first on our list is the Enroth Master Controller. I only install the base mod since I don't have a need for the other add-ons, which isn't much, but as we move along the list there will be a lot. Um, however, Master Controller is very helpful, in my opinion, if you're into like storytelling, making machine number clips, you can adjust your sim, your household with ease, you know, without having to jump through hoops or go through obstacles to make that one little change, such as going into stylus or uh, amending relationships or making adjustments to the household. But I will get more into details once we get into the Sims 3 game. Alright, so next on our list is the story progression, and again, I only installed the base mod, so with this, there are a lot of additional add-ons that, like I said, if you're doing certain challenges or let's play, it could be very useful because it provides settings that the game don't come with. So with the story progression, I really love the feature of providing stories from sims that are not in your household. Like, you know, example, if you're living with a friend or you're living with your parents, even though you move out on your own, you still get major life updates, such as if they get married, divorced, have kids, or even coming close to death. So it's really great that, you know, they keep you updated even though you're not living with them. And another great feature is the immigration where if you're moving into a new town or if you're using a custom world that is not populated, it's a great way to fill up the empty homes without having to do it manually, which is very useful if you're starting up a new game. And there's actually a lot more features that I cannot think of on the top of my head, so once we move into the game, I can get into more details. So next on the list is the Enros Tagger mod, which used to be available with the story progression, and for whatever reason, they took it out and made a separate mod for it, but I really love this in a sense where if you want to track down a certain sim, you don't have to purposely visit their lot and you know they're not home. And then with this one, they actually show you uh, how much their income is or how much they're worth along with uh, what they're doing. So it's a really great way to track down certain sims if you know, you're know you a stalker like me. <laughs> and then on to the next one, the Overwatch. So this one is a little tricky, a lot of people have different opinions, but for me, I find it useful in a sense where if a certain sim is stuck, especially in an open world, it actually resets them in case it does cause this lag to your game. So this in a way kind of clears that lag, but if there's a lot of stuck sim, then you're going to encounter a lot of issues. So there's not really a lot of features to this, but other than just, um, I guess, catching sims that are stuck. And on to our last Enroth mod, the Woohooer mod. Once again, I only installed the base mod which allows the teen and teen adult woohoo, which I find it to be pretty useful if I have like a spur at the moment, I want to play with teen and adult, but it's not really useful for everyone, but for me it's just very handy. And also if you guys recognize the Kama Simtra that I did use or mentioned a lot in my Working Girl Challenge. So like I said, there are certain add-ons that is useful for certain challenges. And on to the next few mods, they're pretty self-explanatory. So first one is the no intro. So you pretty much you skip the introduction when you're starting The Sims 3 game, which I find very useful. I don't have to always click on it and skip it. It just kind of jumps right into the loading screen. And then on to the next one, the No Feel Sparkle, very self-explanatory. I was just very sick and tired of all the sparkles that comes out as I build the wall. 
All right, so on to the next one. I actually have two different preference. If I don't know if they really clash, but I don't put both of them in at the same time as either one or the other. But as of right now, I am using this one, which is the Pregnancy Progress Controller. So this is really useful when I'm making those storylines, those uh, machinima clips. If I want to get a sim pregnant, I want to set the offspring of gender and how many babies at a time. So this is very useful in the sense of that. I don't know if it causes glitches down the line since I don't really play through. It's more like I get the sim pregnant, I record and I'm done, you know. So I haven't really fully, fully tested this in, um, you know, down the line part of the game. But with the next one, this is the one that I actually use for my 100 baby challenge. And, you know, you can set how many days you want the pregnancy to be. You can set it to one day, two days, or three days, or even five days, or I think if you want infinite time. So for me, I chose the two day pregnancy. As you know, the 100 baby challenge, it gets very repetitive and I just don't want to wait for like three to four days from the base game. So this is totally like, you know, personal preference, which one you want and just have fun with it. So the next mod is the apartment mod. This originally was installed for the purpose of fixing an issue I was encountering with apartments. Every time I lived in an apartment, I did not have the option to disable roommate service or roommates. And I don't know if it was the NROS causing an issue, but even though I dismiss all seven roommates, every morning at 9 a.m. they all come back, different sims, and it was just a really annoying uh, glitch that this was able to fix. But it also provides another feature of playing as an occupant or as a landlord. So I really got into that and I did use this feature for the working girl and it was pretty fun because if you're playing as an occupant, if you have any broken appliance, you can actually call your landlord to fix it for free or you don't have to pay out of pocket. Now if you're playing as a landlord, you actually have to repair any broken appliance, you have to fork up money and it's it's a lot of fun in a way if you want to really get into the apartment style. So on to the next thing on the list, which is actually not a mod, but a custom content at the Pose Player. If anyone uses poses for thumbnails, you know how holy grail useful this is. So like I said, you can use this for creating thumbnails, make your sim pose a certain way, or if you're doing those machinima clips, you know, you make your sim pose, and it's just a lot of fun to play with and there are so many different poses available online that you can't really use them all. So the next one is pretty much the same, it's called the animation player. Instead of posing still, you actually get animation out of the sims and this one I did not find out until I started my deception series and then when I found it I was like where has this been all my life? It was just amazing to use for creating those machinima clips and you get to make your sim talk without having all those hand throwing gestures or like my working girl you can make sims dance on a pole so there are a lot of infinite you know downloads available online for certain interactions and it's very easy to find i i just simply google like what i want my sim to do and then just a whole crap load of lists comes out <laughs> so this pretty much wraps up my must-have mods and my favorites so now i will be moving over to the game if you guys want to know a little bit more in depth on how these nraw settings i have set to make my game a little smoother so before we move on to the end raw settings i just need to clarify that i am using a decent computer now so what you're seeing is a lot smoother and NROS just only gives it that boost of a smoother gameplay but before when I first started my channel you can tell there was a lot of significant lag with the laptop I was using it wasn't top of the line but at the same time it wasn't like crappy so I guess you would consider a decent laptop but without the NROS it does cause a lot of lag at the same time 
if you have too many expansion pack and stuff pack enabled for the gameplay it does play a big factor into the lag because there's just too many things loading at once but if you only play the base game with like one expansion pack I'm guaranteeing you should have a really smooth gameplay with or without the NROS but the, generally the NROS is just giving you the extra boost of a smoother gameplay all right so first let's go over um the master controller so with the master controller you can actually go into the city hall to adjust the nraw settings or if you want to go you know via your sim you can click on your sim and click on nraws and then you have master controller so i will only be going over the features i use the most if you guys want a more in-depth tutorial for master controller or story progression just let me know in the comments below i'll be glad to create a video for you guys if you're really not familiar with this mod all right so of course first thing i use the absolute most is the stylus it pretty much has all the features from changing your sim head to toe with hair makeup outfit however you cannot adjust the face features or body features it's just a more simple version of creative sims without having to go through all that weight in the loading screen all right so next one is from intermediate i use career and relationship a lot so with career you can definitely uh, have your sim join a certain career choose a career track um, what position they're currently in as well as job performance so it's very easy in a way that you don't have to endure playing the job and career and just like a simple click and bam that's where you want your sim to be at and then another great feature is the school performance for your kids if you want them to be in the honor roll you want them to fail it's just as simple as one easy click all right so with the relationship very very simple you know you can, you can actually choose the category you want them to be in or just click a sub and then it'll just bring you to all the sims available in town so let's just put example uh, Bryce Archer I want to be married with him so you just click on husband and then you enter how many days you guys have been married we'll go ahead and set two and right off the bat uh, Oh, I think that sim may actually be, uh, what you would call it. Well, anyways, whatever he is, he is now our husband. So it's just a very easy to adjust relationships. You can adjust them to strangers, and then it's kind of like a dice roll if they'll be in your friends list or it'll be someone you haven't met yet. So those are some very great features that I absolutely love. Let me double check what other things that I do use as well. So with the advanced feature, you get to adjust their skill level, which is just great if you don't want them to actually work their skill from scratch or if your sim is glitching, you can go ahead and click on reset sim. The master controller does provide a pregnancy option, but there's, as you can see, there's really no further advanced settings. That's why I had to put in a separate pregnancy mod. All right, so the next one that I use a lot would be the outfit. So when I'm making those um, machinima clips and I don't want to disturb my sims interaction, you can actually just go ahead and click on outfit and choose the outfit you want them to be in without interrupting what they're doing. So that's another great feature. I think that pretty much sums up all the features I mainly use. Oh, I lied. There is one crucial feature that I always use and if you guys are in the same boat with me you'll understand but we're gonna move into settings create a sims and show in compact form of accessories clothing and hats if you have a lot of custom content and I mean a lot or just generally if you have a lot of clothing selection you know when you jump into outfits it takes forever to load shirts top or bottoms and outfits so this I will go ahead and show you a clip of exactly what I mean. Showing in compact form. So you know how you have one shirt and then you have different color selection. So if you enable the showing compact form clothing, it actually compacts all the selection just for one selection. So instead of showing different colors, you get to see just different type of shirts 
overall. So this will definitely save a lot of loading time and it's very very useful. Alright, so that's pretty much it for Master Controller. Yep, that's it. Alright, so let's move on to story progression. With story progression, I generally like to go into City Hall because I don't know if there is a difference as far as story progression for the whole town or story progression settings for the certain sim. So I just go into City Hall, I click on Enroth, and then I click on to story progression. So this way it generally sets the setting for the whole entire town. So with the story progression, the first thing I always set when I start up a new game is general options, all stories because it will be default to all and you don't want to know all the updates of every sims or else you're gonna get non-stop notification. So sometimes I usually set as custom meaning that I will get notification from blood, enemies, and people in my portrait panel, which generally would be blood but I just set it just in case. But if you only want to have portrait panel, basically you highlight the ones that are selected, yes? And it will only show notifications for sims in your portrait panel. But you have whole other options that you can set per your own preference. So this way you get to keep updated with sims alive that are not in your household and you want to just follow their important life updates. Alright, so next one I always like to do is go into lots and options of immigration and emigration. So this is what I had mentioned earlier, if you're starting a new town and there are a lot of empty homes you want to fill in, this is where I go to. So the, with the settings I use, I just click on this and then this is what would pop up if it's not active. So I generally set this to 1000 because that's what I read online and it works the fastest way. So once you click on that, there are a whole other different options that don't get overwhelmed. I actually ignore every single one except for one, which is the rapid immigration. So let's just say if you have five empty houses to fill, you just type in the number five. But if you're starting a new town, you don't know how many empty houses there are, I would safely set this to 15. Because if you have 50 homes and you want to fill in 50 homes, it's going to lag like a mofo. I'm not gonna lie. And sometimes it lags so bad that it will crash your game. So generally if you put 15 to 20, that's a safe amount for the game to run smoothly without crashing. So after you select the amount you want to fill in the empty homes, what I usually do is, you know, accept everything, just let it load because sometimes depending on your computer, it could be a significant lag or a minor lag. But if you do encounter a significant lag to the point where it crashes, don't set it to 15. Set it to 5. Do 5 at a time. And then as you let the game load, let's actually go back in and you can check to see um, the current situation. So let's go to general, lots, immigration, oh wrong one, uh, into immigration. And you can see it already filled up one empty home because it is set to 14. So when it sets to zero, the best way I would do is go into edit town and see which house is actually empty or not empty. So that's generally how you will know how many houses you need to fill. Um, another important note is that once you're done filling with the empty homes, always remember to go back into the immigration gauge and set this back to zero so it's not active. If you don't set this back, technically the immigration is going to be constantly running in the background which can cause a lag to the game. So just remember. <laughs> and the last thing in the story progression I forgot to mention is to enable progression. I think, I'm not sure, but I think by default it should be set on false. So I actually just change it to true. And that pretty much wraps up the story progression settings I have. Some of you think it may not be worth it to put in this mod if I only use the little settings, but those little settings are so helpful for starting up the game and keeping up to date with Sims not in your household. So next one would be the Overwatch, which is going to be so much more simple than the master controller or the story progression but you go into settings and it's a simple enable true or false for each category. So one thing I always do is enable, 
testing cheats because this way it will always be enabled you don't have to type it in every single time you start up a game so it's very useful if you use cheats i mean just not for gameplay but just generally if you like to use cheats and then i would uh, depending on what game I, I'm playing, I would turn on and off the stuck check so the Overwatch sometimes can catch the stuck sims or not if you are encountering more of a lag. And the last settings I would use is to turn off the display nightly notification because it does tend to lag when it shows the 3am, uh, I guess in a way the cleanup for the 3am. So I usually disable it so I don't get any lag. Alright, that sums up the Overwatch settings. Like I said, it's very, very simple. It's only three settings I use. The rest are default, so I just leave it as it is. So the last but not least Edra setting I would like to go over is the Wuhuer mod. Uh, as you can see, I still have the Kama Simtra from the Working Girl. I didn't bother to take it out since sometimes it is fun to play with that feature. Alright, so you have to go into the Wuhu to enable Team Wuhu or Team Adult Woohoo and there's actually a whole bunch of other interaction and this one is actually pretty important for some people who do a lot of Woohoo in their game is to disable the stride of pride and if you guys know what I mean if you do Woohoo a lot it's very frustrating for the sim to get from point A to point B with that icon or movelet so there's like I said a lot of different interactions or settings you can set in the Woohoo or mod so that pretty much wraps up the must-have mods and some favorites for The Sims 3. I think I may have rambled on a little longer than expected. I got totally carried away with explaining the features to you guys. It kind of turned into a tutorial, which I don't think you guys mind. And also just FYI, I will be doing a Sims 4 version for this in case you guys do want to know what's my Sims 4 must-have mods. Alright, so I'll be wrapping it up here. Like always, Thank you for watching. Hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Bye, everyone.